Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to go over how smart home technologies like the Philips Hue uses can interfere with wireless networks and how you can kind of tune your network to avoid possible issues. Now, this video actually comes from a comment that was brought to my attention by Michael in the comment section of one of my other videos, so thank you for bringing this to my attention. This was actually something that I had not heard of uh, before. But anyways, what is this issue? Well, first let's kind of talk about wireless channels real quick. Um, in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, there's three non-overlapping channels, at least in the United States. There is a fourth non-overlapping um, in other parts of the world, but in general, when we're talking about non-overlapping 2.4 gig channels, we're talking about channels 1, 6, and 11. So typically you would design your wireless network to space these channels apart um, as best you can to prevent access points from interfering with each other. And like I said, I didn't know this before, but some smart home technologies such as uh, what's called Zigbee, which is what the Philips Hue uses to uh, connect to its smart home devices, uh, they also use the 2.4 gig range for their communication as well. And now I'm not exactly super read up on these smart home technologies. Personally, I use a Philips Hue for a few of my lights and uh, I use that with a Google Home. I'm not too into the whole smart home scene and so I haven't really done much research into it uh, past basically what I did for this video. But I do know that there's two main smart home wireless technologies. One of them is this Zigbee and the other is uh, called Z-Wave. And this is in addition to regular wireless signals and Bluetooth technologies that some smart home devices use as well. But as far as I'm aware, Zigbee is the protocol that will overlap with regular Wi-Fi, and uh, Z-Wave actually does not use the 2.4 gig spectrum, so it does not have an issue, in, at least in this area. But specifically, the Philips Hue uses Zigbee to communicate between uh, devices and the bridge. So while your phone uses Wi-Fi uh, to connect to your local area network, that communicates at some point with the Philips Hue bridge, which in turn uses Zigbee to communicate with uh, light bulbs, for example. So it's almost like it's using Wi-Fi twice, except for it's a completely different protocol on the bridge end of things. Um, but both of these signals can interfere with each other. So let's kind of take a little bit deeper look at uh, Zigbee. Um, when we compare their Zigbee channels to Wi-Fi channels, they kind of look uh, very similar, but the channels are not immediately comparable. So where 2.4 gig Wi-Fi uh, split into the channels ranging from 1 to 11, uh, there are actually channels 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7, 8, 9, and 10 between these, but we just don't use them because the spacing between them, you would really only be able to get two non-overlapping channels if you use these in between uh, numbers instead of just 1, 6, and 11. But Zigbee uses what they call channels 11 through 26. And it would be excusable to think that these two don't interfere since it kind of just appears that Wi-Fi uses channels 1 through 11 and Zigbee carries on where they leave off with 11 through 26. However, this is actually not the case. Zigbee channels 11 through 14 actually directly overlap with uh, wireless channel 1. 15 through 19 are a direct overlap of channel 6, and 20 through 24 directly map to channel 11 on Wi-Fi. Now, Zigbee channels 25 and 26, which from my reading, apparently these are kind of newer Zigbee channels, but these are said not to overlap with channel 11, but this is also apparently not true because there's additional airspace taken up by uh, what's called side lobes in the Wi-Fi signal. And these actually, they don't carry Wi-Fi data, but they're a part of the signal itself. So basically 25 and 26 also are overlapping in the uh, channel 11 area. So basically what we have to do when we're thinking about Wi-Fi alongside Zigbee is we're going to think of Zigbee as basically its own Wi-Fi channel. So where we would deploy, say, wireless uh, channel 11, instead we are going to use one of the Zigbee channels like 20 through 26. And, and the same is true for the other ones, where we would deploy a wireless channel 1, we would use 11 to 14, etc., etc. So really we just need to modify our existing wireless plans to kind of account for this overlap. So now to show an example, I'm just going to use my own home network and I'm currently running two Unify access points 
which are using two hard-coded channels uh, that I don't remember. Let's take a look here, see what we got going on. Um, actually, I'm using auto automatic channels here. Uh, yeah, it looks like I'm actually using automatic channels for both. Uh, it's a little surprising. I thought I'd hard-coded my channels, but anyways, let's go back to the whiteboard here. Since I have automatic channels, basically uh, we can set whatever we want. So here's kind of how we would design this. Say I got my two unify access points. We'll use blue to make that a little uh, prettier. I'm going to assign one of them as channel 1 and the other as channel 6, which leaves me channel 11 range for the Philips Hue bridge. And we'll just say we're going to use uh, channel 25 Zigbee for that one. So basically what we're doing is equating the Philips Hue to another wireless access point on channel 11. And if we really wanted to, we could use like channel 6 for this one, channel 11 for this one, and then we would use like the Zigbee channel 11, which maps to channel 1 for Wi-Fi. Hopefully that's good and uh, confusing for you. <laughs> let's, uh, let's keep it the way I had it before with channels 1, 6, and 11 here. So 1, 6, and 11 for our Philips Hue. And by 11, I mean 25. See, I'm already confusing myself here. Now, there is going to come a problem with uh, these and some other networks, which would be like neighboring access points. In my case, I'm in a fairly rural area, and my neighbors are a good enough distance away to not interfere with my Wi-Fi. But if you live in, say, an apartment complex, you're probably going to have a good amount of competing wireless signals. And add to that the fact that most neighboring access points are not going to be hard-coded. Just take a look at mine. They were all automatic. Uh, you'll basically be fighting a moving target um, when dealing with this. So when radios are set to automatic, they're going to look for the band with the least interference, and they're going to try and use that, which means that the channel used by neighboring access points can change very rapidly, and it's all going to depend on the wireless environment. Now, we can still hard-code our channels to the least interfering channels, at least at the time, and we can just hope that the automatic devices stay off of those channels and stay where they currently are. But in order to kind of do this, we need to know what the wireless environment is. So this brings up another question, and that's how do we test for neighboring access points? And there's really two ways to do this. One is just to use a laptop and download a uh, specific program. And I'm just going to bring up the Windows Store that's built into Windows 10 here. There's actually an app called Wi-Fi Analyzer. And this is one that you're going to want to use on a laptop. You'll download this, run it, connect to a wireless network, and then it'll show you all the neighboring access points as well as the channels that are using and the strength of the signal. And you can use this information to plan your own wireless network. Now, if you don't have a laptop um, and you're running Unify access points, you can actually use the controller and your Unify access points to see the wireless environment. Um, you can see neighboring wireless information as well as uh, scan the um, actual RF environment. To do that, we can go into one of these access points. Actually, no, that's how we scan. We're going to go into insights and take a look at neighboring access points. Now, here's where you see all of them and the channel. So if we just kind of sort by channel, you can see we've got a whole bunch, actually four of them, using channel one that uh, we can see mostly nearest to the office access point. So we probably want to avoid channel one uh, for our office access point. We'll put that one on channel six. Now we only have two on channel six that are neighboring and that's near the basement access point. So we can place that one on say channel one. And then the rest of these are all on channel 44, 149, whatever. So those are in the five gigahertz spectrum. We're not really concerned with those at this point. And we could actually just sort by two gigahertz. So here we can see channel 1 is by far used the most around my house, and channel 6 is uh, is not. And I don't see anything on channel 11, so that one should be completely fine to use for either a wireless access point or the Philips Hue. And there are phone applications to do this as well. I believe you can download them from either the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and also scan the wireless networks around you. Pretty much anything with a wireless radio in it is able to pick up wireless signals and tell you what the channels are, what the names are, and all of that. So now that we kind of know what our environment looks like, what I am going to do is actually assign channel 1 to my office access point. Since channel 1 is the most congested around here, um, I'm going to assign it to this one, which is a less critical access point in my house. It's really just used for 
basically one or two rooms where the other one for the basement is used for a much wider area. So I'm going to use channel six for the basement and then we're gonna keep the Philips Hue on that channel 11, which really isn't used at all in my area. So we'll go back to the wireless controller, open up my devices, assign the basement uh, access point a channel of six for 2.4. I'll just go ahead and leave five gigahertz as auto. That's perfectly fine for my house here. Go ahead and apply the changes and it is now provisioning. So let's look at the details, go to the channel utilization. We can see six is at least what it's configured on and 151 for the five gigahertz one. And if we go to our office access point, we can see it's already using channel one anyways, um, even on auto and 46 for five gigahertz. But we'll just go ahead and set that to make sure it doesn't change from channel one. Go ahead, cue the changes and apply. Now we've got both of them provisioning. So the last step is actually to change the information on our Philips Hue. So for that, we're gonna to have to get the IP address of the Hue. Uh, do that as you will, either through DHCP server or ARP entries. Um, I just happen to know that mine is 10.88.13.144. And if we browse here, actually, I do not believe this is uh, where we can make that change. I think we have to use the actual Philips Hue app for this. So here we are in the Philips Hue app. We're just gonna go to settings and we can see under Hue Bridges, we have one connected. Go ahead and tap on that. And if we look at the information out to the right of that, it should show us what channel it's on. And it says here that actually the time zone is New York, which is wrong anyways. Um, and that the channel range is on channel 20. So let's take a look at that. And you can see at the bottom, we have current channels to list uh, 11, 15, 20, and 25. So since we wanna be in the wireless channel 11 range, we're going to want to change this to channel 25. We're just gonna tap on change channel. And actually it uh, looks like it needs to turn on all the lights. Um, I don't think I did that, but we'll see if this works. All right, and it says that the channel change has completed and if a light doesn't blink, when you tap blink lights, power off and power on that light. And if it still doesn't resolve, change the channel again. And you can see it changed us down to 15. That was actually in the opposite direction I wanted to go. So I think we have to change this a couple more times to get back to 25. All right, and I just hit the change uh, channel button a couple more times and went out to see if my lights did actually blink and they did. I didn't have any connection issues at all. And now it says that my channel is 25. So we've accomplished what we set out to do. And that is put this Philips Hue on the Wi-Fi channel 11 range and change our other wireless access points to uh, channels one and six. So one of the obvious questions that's gonna come up here is what, what if you have more than two access points? Well, you're gonna wanna reuse the channel which is furthest away from the bridge in that case and I'll just kinda draw that out here real quick. So let's just say that this is your house layout and say you've got an access point here, here, and here, not saying that this is an optimal layout at all, this is just for the sake of example. So say you've got three access points and your Philips Hue is kind of in this room. Basically, you're gonna have to reuse an overlapping channel here at some point, so the way you would kind of uh, lay this out is just kind of make a general overlap diagram and put both of the furthest access points on the same channel. So we're gonna reuse channel one at the front of the house and the rear. And then we could say the middle one can go on channel six and then the Philips Hue can still go on channel 11. So that is kind of how you would lay it out if there's more than just two access points at your disposal. Now when you start stacking them on top of each other, it starts to get a little harder, but just because two channels overlap doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna cause any major issues. And there can also be a lot of trial and error if you have a crowded radio network anyways. So kind of just play with it a little bit and see what works for you. And again, uh, thanks to Michael for bringing this to my attention. And hopefully this gives a little bit of information on how you can identify a good plan for your wireless that uses Zigbee. Um, as far as I know, other smart home protocols don't actually interfere with wireless, but let me know if there is something that I missed because I don't really know a whole lot about this smart home technology. And as always, if there's any questions, leave them in the comments and also as always, happy networking.